Thanks for coming anyway. This is wonderful to talk to you. Uh, as you know, I guess, the show is called Who? With a question mark. And um, I put a little subtitle on it, which is, it's a question of identity. And the issue here that I'm exploring with each one of these images is, um, on the surface of it, at least, how people see themselves. So it is exploring the notion of personal identity and how one projects that identity. So what I did before I started this whole series was I did some research into how photographers approach portraiture, um, a little bit of the history of portraiture. And one of the things that caught me right at the beginning of that whole process was that pretty much universally, regardless of the individual approach that a uh, portrait photographer had, um, they looked at portraiture in terms of essentially a single shot of a person. Now, it might be the whole body, it might be just the face, profile, whatever, but it was always this single shot. And that really interested me because, as we all know, we all have various facets to our personality. You know, some like to say, I'm a different person when I'm with different kinds of people. I have a private self, I have a public self, and all that kind of stuff. And I thought it was kind of interesting that um, with that knowledge that we are all very different, how is it that people can think, and people have thought this, that you can capture a person's sense of identity, who they are, in a single image? And that bugged me for a while. Now, I'm kind of an obsessive character anyway, so as it was bugging me, I was going through other issues. And I thought, well, it would be really interesting to approach people, uh, both literally and in my imagination, from the perspective of, well, what if that single shot isn't enough? Well, what do you do then? And photography is a really interesting medium in that sense because um, you know, if you think, uh, hark back to sort of modernist age in, in photography, that um, there's this notion of capturing that moment. And um, there's also a notion that photography was always very good at sort of um, representing that external reality, but never very good at talking narrative, at representing narrative, a story. And those things bug me as well. And I've been exploring with some other um, approaches to photography. And in general, my approach to photography is one of heavily constructing my images. In a traditional sense, a lot of people would say, I'm not really a photographer. None of my images are simple, single, straight shots. If you look around in this room, these images are made up from each one anywhere from 30 to 300 separate shots and then composed into a single image. And that becomes important in this notion of identity because it, it, to me it's a, it's a sort of, it's a material representation of our psychological reality. Um, I still see an individual as a single individual, but not as um, uniquely single uh, in the sense that we are made up of all these things but they come together into one single thing and in a sense I try to represent that in these images so what I've done is I, I will go out and meet somebody yourself for instance and I would say hey look do you like what I'm doing I have you know show you some examples and if I can sucker you into liking the idea then I'll go okay well I'll tell you about my approach and the approach basically is I want you to speak about yourself. So in that sense, these images are you as the subject talking to the audience through my eyes. And then we talk about the person who's standing in front of me. And um, so the process that develops these images is a three-step process. Uh, there's talking, there's a lot of talking. For many of these images, it's months and months of sitting down over coffee, tea, or something like that, and chatting. You know, just every day, get together and, and talking about things. And through that, that dialogue, I start developing images of the person in front of me. And as I develop fragments of these images, I feed them back to that person. I say, oh, you know, that room? to me, what you say, I, inter I 
then interpret visually, and I try to feed that visual interpretation back to them, and then we get a sort of back and forth going on about whether my interpretation in any way represents their internal reality. And that goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until eventually I have this image and I go, here's what I have, what I see of you. And they either go, you're full of crap, and we start all over again, or they go, yeah, okay, you've got something there. And like I said, this could go on for months without ever picking the camera up. And then at some point we say, we've got it. And at that point, I quite literally have that image in my head. And that's the image that we shoot. So it's, it's kind of, again, it's kind of a reverse the way one tends to think of photography, where you go out and you photograph that scene out there. I photograph the scene in here. Um, I try to make it happen in a way, right? And that's one of the reasons why multiple um, uh, images building together into one single one is, is that important, because I shoot all the fragments. As the person is talking about themselves, they are talking about different aspects of themselves, each one which is a fragment of that image. If you look around here, they're all of a, of a single person, but there's always multiples. And the goal to establish then with these images is to think about all these multiples as part of a single whole. And so they're not just fragments, they're interacting components. It's like a movable jigsaw puzzle, and each one of those components um, interacts with others and eventually through that interaction with the audience. So you look at this and the hope is that some kind of whole comes out of it. Um, and so then we shoot that. And during the shooting process all kinds of things happen. With each one of these I have sort of, oh there was an accident moment which just made it better. Um, and then, you know, the shoot takes half a day at, at most. And then I go into my favorite place, which is my, my virtual darkroom. I spend a lot of time on, uh, in Photoshop. And I work the images up, and that can take weeks. Um, and then I get a final image. And that is, for me, one of the scariest moments, because one of the major issues for me in, in making these kinds of images is whether or not I'm even capable of grasping who the person is that I was talking to through their verbal exchange with me? Did I actually get anything from them that meaningfully I have been able to turn into a visual image of their personality? So then, you know, I finish it, I send a copy of it off to them. In all of my work, um, this is a collaborative process, although I often refer to my subjects as victims. <laughs> Uh, they are at my mercy. Uh, in fact, this is really very much a collaborative process. And I take that collaboration very seriously. So when I send this final draft to them, if you like, they have ultimate veto power over it. I, I agree right at the beginning. I tell them that if they don't like the product, if they don't like the end result, I will destroy it. That's my guarantee. I've never once had to do it yet but the guarantee stands. And it's an important one because people talk about themselves. They expose themselves very much in these things. And then, assuming they approve the final version, then I print it up, and it gets to be part of the, the larger collection. So in a way, I mean, what's kind of interesting about these is all of these images have exactly the same framing. Um, it's a landscape, one and a half by sort of one by two and a half. Um, that's a necessary thing for me. It's, to me, it's kind of the visual framework that I normally see reasonably well in. Uh, and they have other certain components that are necessary. But when you look at them, they're all completely different. And to me, that's kind of representative of humanity. We're all human beings. We all have a certain basic thing in common. But beyond that, we're all completely different. And so each one tells a personal story. And the stories unfold. Some of these stories are very um, easily ac accessed visually. Some of them are, are very, very complex. And they all, that difference reflects the people themselves. And I think that's about the, the, the sum of where I'm going with this. Uh, I could talk about individual images, but almost 
literally I could speak to each image somewhere between half an hour and an hour. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll, uh, we'll dispense with that. If any of your viewers want to talk about them, I'd, I'd be happy to do that. But I think that pretty much covers it.